Can fasting work for a diabetic? I mean, can it really, really work? And if so, how do we do it? Stay tuned. Before we get to the video, I have an announcement. My publisher, Harvest House, has offered my first two books, Overcoming Runaway Blood Sugar and 60 Ways to Lower Your Blood Sugar, at a huge discount when you buy them electronically. Normally, you can download these books for 9 or 10 US dollars, but throughout the month of March 2019, they may be purchased for about $2 each. So if you're in a position to download ebooks to your computer, phone, or tablet, here's a great chance to get my books for very little money. The links to where you can get these books, including on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Google Play, are in the description notes below. We're going to continue to do our little book review of Dr. Jason Fong's book titled The Complete Guide to Fasting, written with Jimmy Moore. On our previous post, we looked at the first section of the book which dealt with the history and benefits of fasting. In this video, we'll focus on the second section which gives us the nitty-gritty on how to fast. When it comes to fasting, probably most of us assume we know how to fast. You just don't eat, right? <laughs> don't let any food go down our throat and perhaps drink only water for a couple of days and voila, we're fasting. But fasting has a lot of variations. Even in the Bible, the prophet Daniel sought the Lord with a limited fast. He wrote this, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth. Daniel was apparently still eating, but he restricted his diet and refused to drink wine during that three-week period. Before we go very far into this book review, let me remind you that Dr. Fung says that four types of people should not fast. People severely undernourished or underweight, children under the age of 18, pregnant women, and breastfeeding women. Then he lists four other types of people who should only fast under the strict supervision of a doctor. People with gout, people taking medications, diabetics, type 1 and type 2, and people with gastroesophageal reflux disease. He warns that diabetics taking insulin or insulin-producing drugs could end up getting a major hypo episode when fasting, which could be extremely dangerous or even fatal. In Dr. Fung's version of fasting, he normally wants us to eat nothing, but he does allow three drinks besides water, coffee, tea, and bone broth. Interestingly, he allows his patients to mix some veggies in while simmering those bones in water, but then at the end, the liquid must be strained and only what passes through the strainer may be drunk. Bone broth has become a big superstar among the serious fasting crowd these days, and I would guess it allows people to fast for several days or a week or two when they might not have lasted had they not had that bone broth. Fung advises you to add a little sea salt to the broth to prevent salt depletion. You're clearly getting some nutrition from the broth, and probably you wouldn't feel quite like you were starving the way you might if you drank only water. Now, I say probably because I've never tried bone broth. The idea of simmering a pot of bones in water with perhaps a few veggies for 8 to 24 hours seems like a lot of hassle to me. I do drink coffee when I fast. Instant coffee is a quick, easy way to get some coffee and prevents me from getting a caffeine withdrawal headache. But one of these days, I may do the bone broth thing and do a fast of several days and create a video about it and let you know how it works for me. Dr. Fung lists several of what he calls short-duration fasts, and he starts with a fast so-called that I would hardly consider a fast at all, but technically it is. He talks about the 12-hour fast, which is simply when you go about 12 hours between your evening meal and your breakfast. If you eat supper at 7 p.m. and then eat breakfast at 7 a.m. the next day, you have fasted. You've gone about 12 hours without eating. For 12 hours, your body has not had to deal with any food, your insulin levels have dropped, and you've given your pancreas a good rest. Of course, you don't get this if you have a late evening snack just before you go to bed. And even if this is all you did, for many people, this would be a major improvement. Some of us have almost considered it our inalienable right to have our late-night snacks and go to bed with a full, full belly. 
The idea of eating our supper at six and then closing up shop and not touching a bite of food until the next morning at breakfast just seems somehow wrong. <laughs> but in truth, this is how all our ancestors lived and ate for thousands of years until we learned to fall in love with and worship the idea of snacking. Constant, perpetual, never-ending, endless, persistent, relentless, snacking, snacking, and more snacking. And where did all this snacking get us? Where we are today with an epidemic of type 2 diabetes, obesity, heart disease, high blood sugar, and all the manifestations of metabolic syndrome. If we never fasted at all but simply ate three reasonably sized, relatively low-carb meals each day without sugar or refined carbs, most people would be miles, or should I say kilometers, ahead of where they are now metabolically. Taking things a little further, Fung describes the 16-hour fast. Another way to say this is that we're creating an 8-hour window of eating each day. During those 8 hours, we can squeeze in all our meals, hopefully low-carb meals, and then once again we close up shop and refuse to allow any more food to touch our lips until tomorrow when our 8-hour eating window shows up again. This is also an easy way to fast, and I put that in quotes because in my mind it's really hardly fasting. It's simply becoming more disciplined in the times we eat and giving our bodies a slightly longer period of freedom from food digestion than previously. And according to Fung, more importantly, it's creating a longer period of low insulin levels and allowing us more time to burn the sugar out of our fatty liver and fatty pancreas. He writes, The daily 16-hour fast certainly has more power than the daily 12-hour fast, but should be combined with a low-carbohydrate diet for best effect. Weight loss on this regimen tends to be slow and steady. According to Dr. Fung, the times we eat can make a difference as well. He cites a study of overweight women who were divided into two groups and put on a 1,400 calories a day diet. But one group ate a large breakfast while the other group of women had a large dinner. Fung writes, The breakfast group lost far more weight than the dinner group. Why? Despite following similar diets and eating about the same amount, the dinner group had a much larger overall rise in insulin. An earlier 1992 study showed similar results. In response to the same meal given either early or late in the day, the insulin response was 25 to 50 percent greater in the evening. Weight gain is driven by insulin. Fung goes on to say, so the optimal strategy seems to be eating the largest meal in the midday and only a small amount in the evening hours. So, by this logic, if you're going to have a window of eating, it might be better to set that window more toward the morning and afternoon rather than in the afternoon and late evening. Dr. Fung then goes on to discuss longer periods of fasting. He writes, Because breaking insulin resistance requires not just low insulin levels but persistently low levels, we need longer fasting periods. The easiest extended fast would be the 24-hour fast, which sounds sort of like you're going an entire day without fasting. Well, in a sense you are, but what this means is you can eat one meal a day, and then you stop eating until that same time rolls around the next day. This is popularly called OMAD, one meal a day. And I'm hearing all kinds of testimonies from diabetics who have seen amazing improvement and diabetes reversal through this. Fung writes, this fasting regimen is also the most easily incorporated into everyday life. You can fast without disrupting your family dinners. It really only involves skipping breakfast and lunch. It's particularly easy during a busy day at work. You start the morning with a large cup of coffee, skipping breakfast, and then work right through lunch and get home in time for dinner. You'll be home for dinner without anybody even realizing you were fasting. He describes two types of fasts that allow a limited number of calories. The 5-2 diet allows you to eat normally five days of the week, but on the other two days you may eat up to five or six hundred calories. Another similar fast works the same way, but in this case you eat normally every other day and then you limit yourself to 500 or 600 calories every other day. This type of fasting is called, appropriately, alternate day fasting. Another type of fast is the 36-hour fast, where you eat dinner and then you skip all your meals the next day and you resume eating with breakfast on the following day. 
Dr. Fong's basic attitude about the need for longer fasts is expressed in these words. In general, the longer the patient has had diabetes, the longer the duration of fasting required. We cannot reverse 20 years of diabetes in a few weeks, but the longer duration fasting period gives us the needed power to get good results in a reasonable time. In the second half of the book, Jason Fung continues to share a few stories of men and women who have seen major victories over diabetes through low-carb diets with intermittent fasting. In one case, he shares the story of a brother and sister who were both diabetic and both achieved remarkable success in conquering diabetes. Now, this brother and sister had the unlikely names of Sonny and Sherry. Yeah, you heard that right, Sonny and Sherry. Maybe their parents were big Sonny and Cher fans. I don't know. Sonny came to Dr. Fung with extremely serious diabetic issues. By this point, he had been diabetic for about 20 years and was taking maximum doses of metformin along with 70 units of insulin every day. Even with the medication, his A1C score was at 7.2. He was counseled to fast for 36 to 42 hours three times a week. His improvement was almost immediate. In two weeks, he was taken off all his insulin, and a month later, all his other diabetes medications were stopped. His waist size was dramatically reduced, and his kidneys, which were showing signs of failing, began to work normally once again. Fung writes, After injecting himself with insulin twice daily for five years and taking diabetic medications for over 20 years, Sonny was free of type 2 diabetes with just a few short months of proper diet and intermittent fasting. And then his sister Sherry, who was also diabetic, seeing her brother's amazing results, got interested for herself. She'd been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes nine years previously and was a walking pharmacy. She took medications for diabetes, in fact three of them, as well as medicines for cholesterol, blood pressure, and heartburn. Since her diabetes wasn't quite as severe as her brother's had been, she was instructed to do three 24-hour fasts each week. In other words, three days out of the week should eat only one meal. The other days should eat three meals. Within two weeks, get this, within two weeks, she was taken off her diabetic medications as they were no longer needed. Her blood sugar came down into the normal range and she began to lose weight. Within a single month, she had stopped all six of her medications, and yet her A1C was lower without the medicine than it had been previously with the medicine. She was soon able to drop all the other medications and felt better without it than she had ever felt when she used it. Dr. Fung sums up the experience of this brother and sister with these words. This illustrates an important point. Type 2 diabetes is a dietary disease. As such, the only logical treatment is to change diet and lifestyle. If the problem stems from an excessive intake of carbohydrates, then reducing carbohydrates is the answer. If the problem stems from excessive weight, then successful weight loss with fasting is the answer. Once we fix the underlying issue, the disease reverses. However, says Fung, we've been brainwashed to believe that type 2 diabetes and all its complications are inevitable. We've been deceived into believing we can successfully treat a dietary disease with increasing doses of drugs. When the drugs fail to halt the diabetes, we're told that the disease is chronic and progressive. Sonny had type 2 diabetes for over 20 years, yet he managed to successfully reverse his disease within a matter of months. Sherry had been on diabetes medication for seven years and also successfully reversed her disease in a few months. But they are not anomalies. Almost every single day I meet people of all ages who have reversed or are reversing their type 2 diabetes with a fasting regimen. There's not much I can add to that. If you've watched my videos, you know my cardinal rule for beating diabetes. You do whatever you have to do to get those blood sugar numbers down. And if it takes fasting and your doctor says you're okay to fast, then by all means, go for it. Well, there's a lot more I could share, but let me simply say, get the book. It runs around 20 US dollars on Amazon, and I think it'll be $20 well spent. I couldn't possibly go over all the information in the book in a short little video like this, but hopefully I've given you a taste of it and whetted your appetite to buy the book and read it 
slowly, carefully, and prayerfully. I'll put a link in the description notes below, which will take you straight to the Amazon page where you can purchase the book. And notice all those five-star ratings. Obviously, I'm not the only person who thinks this book and this concept of intermittent fasting can be a real help to diabetics. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up so that YouTube will promote it to others. And consider subscribing to this channel so that you can learn a little bit and be equipped in your struggle with the bully of diabetes, a bully that can be beaten. That's it for now. God bless and see you again soon.